Greetings, Ted Hicks, founder, CEO, and chief investment officer for Hicks and Associates Wealth Management. Today is Friday, the 16th of September, 2022. It's about 10 minutes till 11 a.m. as I'm recording this. Yesterday, when the stock market closed, FedEx announced their quarterly earnings. And when they announced their earnings, they also lowered their forecast for the coming quarter. And they also indicated that they are concerned about a worsening economy. Immediately, in the after hours trading session, FedEx stock dropped 16%. I will give you an update on that in a minute or two. Um, but why? Why is FedEx concerned? Um, let's take a look at some of the other news that has come out recently. This is an update on the consumer price index or inflation. And you can see the latest number is 8.2. It's really 8.3. This is a rounding error in my program. It's really 8.2495 or something like that, which rounded up is 8.3, which is the official stat. So the good news is that it's coming down, right? Well, no. Um, that's coming down because this includes um, food and energy. And food and energy is a big component of the CPI. But what's not coming down is the CPI less food and energy. So this is what's referred to as core inflation. So I frequently have a problem looking at core inflation because it subtracts food and energy, but there is value in looking at the data from time to time. And this is one of those times because while the overall inflation has come down a little bit, um, the core inflation actually increased. We expected this to decrease a little bit. In fact, it did the opposite. So um, that's the big problem. Uh, more and more people are recognizing that inflation does not appear to be going away anytime soon. I showed this quote from an analyst that I follow on a regular basis. I read his research every month. His name is Martin Pring, very well respected analyst in the industry. And in his most recent uh, report from September 1, he suggested that he believes inflation is going to be a problem for the next decade and a half. That is indeed a long time. So what does that mean? Consumer confidence is at an all time low. Technically, I guess it has come back up here recently. But if you see this black line, the black line goes all the way back to 19 we are at all-time lows in terms of consumer confidence. So if we want a little bit of bright news, I'm not sure this is actually good news, but uh, at least we're not Argentina. Argentina Central Bank is set to hike their interest rates to 75%. That's not 75 basis points, that's 75% because their inflation is approaching 100%. So at least we're not that bad, but again, that's not all that together encouraging. Um, finally, a couple of uh, charts. This is um, a chart I've been referencing a lot with clients because we're in a, a very tough year. And while we're not in the worst year as of right now, it is close. This chart is something I've been showing a lot. Uh, it's got every year in the S&P 500 since 1976. The bold red line is the current year. And so you can see this is where we're at right now. And there's only two years at this point in the year. There's only two years that were worse than this year. So this is indeed a bad year. It's a very bad year, very tough year. Um, so let's switch now and talk. Uh, give two, I want to look specifically at two stocks. So let's now look at these two stocks. And again, I'm not making any recommendations here. I'm just using these as, a, as an example to illustrate how uh, difficult the current environment is to operate. Um, this is FedEx. Remember FedEx I mentioned at the beginning of the video released their er quarterly earnings yesterday after the market closed and the stock then dropped 16%. You can see this gap here. Uh, the stock closed here on uh, Thursday and it opened this morning down. Now I've got on the screen all the way back to 2020. So far left is January 2020. The high for FedEx was in May of 2021. Since that time, FedEx is down 51%. Um, that's, that's a lot. Let's take a look at Intel. Um, Intel is, I would consider, a, a, a bellwether or historically has been a bellwether. Now, what's going on right now is Intel is down here at this. You see this red line. That's the current price today, about $28.77. But what I want, and you see it's changing um, because it's a live chart. But what I want to show is that current price level goes all the way back to January of 2016. Um, and this stock is down from its highs 
about 60 percent. So it is indeed a very difficult environment. So whenever we are in such a difficult environment, we invariably get clients and prospective clients that will ask us, should I just go to cash? Now, there's two sides to that. There's a financial planning answer and there's an investment management answer. And we uh, have to answer both of those for our clients. So let's talk about the investment management component of that. The investment management component is that it is um, a function of the climate. So if we decide that we need to, if the investment manager decides that we need to increase cash because of the risk in the marketplace or because stops were hit or things, that's an investment management decision. And we as portfolio managers make that decision and have been making that decision all year long and will continue to do so. The problem is for the average American, for the non-professional investment manager, is that the stock market can turn around, the bond market can turn around on any given day. Um, so making a long-term decision to sit out the year or to sit out the quarter um, is dangerous because the markets can turn around at any given time. But again, as active portfolio managers, those are the types of decisions that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis. So then let's look at the financial planning side of that. From a financial planning side, yes, you should absolutely have cash, but that's a universal principle to having what uh, some of us like to call hay in the barn. We like to have something in store so that if we get a, a blown tire or if we get a, a tree for, through the uh, roof or uh, we get laid off, we have some cash that we can go to. We don't have to turn to a credit card and we don't have to violate our investment portfolio because because we have some cash. So those questions, that's a financial planning question, and it really is going to be a function of several different things that we as financial planners would also be taking a look at for our clients. So general rule of thumb, if you are working, if you are still in the accumulation phase, we generally speaking would recommend three to six months of your expenses to be set aside in some variation of cash. Um, and again, cash is not the stock market, not the bond market. It's some variation of cash. Um, and then if you're retired, we will sometimes recommend two to three years. Sometimes I've recommended as many as five years of cash to be set aside because of an economic climate. The bottom line is when you're retired, you usually or sometimes have some fixed income, but then the bulk of your spending can come from your investment portfolio. So if the investment portfolio is going to be um, down, then we don't want to have to tap into it. Now that's why we have that cash bucket set aside. So that's the cash question. Obviously, if you have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to me or my team and we'll take a look at your particular situation. Uh, the other question that we'll sometimes get um, from our retired clients um, is where this will come from is, should I stick to the 4% rule? The 4% rule, for those that don't know, is uh, when you're retired, generally speaking, um, financial planners would recommend that you do not take more than 4% of your portfolio per year. Um, now, that's a rule of thumb. We adjust up and down based upon lots of different factors, but that is the general rule of thumb. Um, and do I, do I think that we need to change that? No, I don't think we need to necessarily change that. Um, but in some years, I'm comfortable telling a client that they can increase their um, withdrawal to say 5% because of where we see the markets and the economy going. But just a week or two ago, I had a client that asked if they could increase their withdrawal and they were at 4.14%, if memory serves me correctly. And I said, I'd really rather you not increase it any further. Um, so it is a function of the environment that we're in. But again, that's a very general, broad statement. If you have any specific questions, by all means, feel free to reach out to me and my team. Happy to take a look at it for you. Um, hope that was helpful, and uh, we'll see you soon.